Mathematics, and I want to welcome you all to today's live training seminar. The topic of today's seminar is an introduction to ArcGIS schematics. The format for the seminar will be to cover uh, a series of three topics. Each topic will be followed by a software demonstration. Then we'll conduct a review of the material and uh, wrap up each topic with a Q&A session from your own questions that you send in. The topics for today uh, will be to uh, go over an overview of the product so that we all have a baseline. And then we'll delve into uh, both some physical network applications of the product and uh, also some other applications beyond the physical networks. So before we get too far into this, I want to kind of establish a base definition um, for what we think of uh, when we are speaking about schematics here at ESRI. We have about three different definitions uh, that the product all applies to. One is just a simplified representation of an object or a set of objects um, where we're trying to understand the structure um, of the elements and how they operate. So here in this diagram we have uh, some electrical features. Here we have some outside plant features uh, coming into an inside plant, perhaps a substation. And we can see from the symbols here uh, our switch positions. And based on the symbology of the, and the uh, depiction of the switches, we can get an understanding of how electricity flows through the substation. So here we have a switch that's open. The electricity will stop. Here we have some closed switches um, through which the electricity will flow. We also think of schematics as a drawing or diagram representing a set of relationships. Here we've abstracted uh, the physical network and reduced it so that we can very simply see the interdependencies between our hospitals and our electrical network substations. So we've reduced a lot of the intervening elements um, that are in place in the field, our switches and transformers, um, to create a very simplified representation that allows us to understand the relationships uh, between these features. So if I were to have an outage at a substation, I could very quickly see what hospitals might potentially be affected. Schematics are, is also really just a way to represent any type of network or diagram uh, in a symbolic system. It's very much about visualization. And uh, another strength of the product is that it frees us from the scaling constraints that are traditionally imposed upon us um, by virtue of the GIS and the map-based placement of features. So oftentimes, uh, well, almost always in the GIS, features are placed at their physical location and oftentimes co-located elements um, are placed on top of one another or in very close proximity. And this makes it uh, di very difficult to look at the connectivity of the elements. Um, while it's obviously important for the accuracy of your data, um, having schematics allows extended visualization capabilities that you wouldn't otherwise have so that you can see the interdependencies among elements. Here I'm looking at resource dependencies um, for flights. So my cabin crew schedule, my cockpit crew, and I can see how a delay in one flight um, can affect uh, my other flights throughout the day. So now that we've kind of established that definition, uh, I want to explore what is ArcGIS schematics and give you an overview of that. Um, it's obviously an ArcGIS desktop extension. It's packaged with ArcGIS desktop, and so you install it with the same CD through which you install any of the other extensions. Um, you activate the functionality of the extension by selecting the extension from the tools menu in Arc Catalog or Arc Map. And it's really for use in any applications concerned with connectivity, relationships, or interdependency among elements. And the graphics here show the toolbars that are available for use within ArcMap to create, edit, and save your diagrams. Some examples of uh, where ArcGIS schematics is useful, and we're going to explore this in more detail, but just briefly, uh, traditional physical network applications and also more abstract things like social networks or supply chain analyses. The graphic here shows a personal geodatabase containing a schematic data set. The schematic data set is stored within the personal geodatabase or, or your enterprise uh, SDE database, and the documents themselves are stored underneath the schematic data set. So ArcMap is not only the primary interface for interacting with your map data, but it's also the primary interface for acting, interacting with your schematic diagrams. And by having 
the same application be the front end for managing those, we have the ability to unite the logical and the physical views. We also have the ability to synchronize and have common symbology between our schematic diagrams and our map documents. And that's fully configurable if you have um, specific diagram standards and symbol standards for your schematics that are different from your map document, that's fine too and that can be configured, but um, it makes it very easy to identify elements between the two diagrams and to import the symbols and share the symbols. We can also synchronize selection, so I can select some elements in my map and push it to the select to the schematic, and uh, obviously I can do the inverse as well. We also edit and save diagrams from within ArcMap. And uh, last but really not least, um, since we are using ArcMap, we have at our fingertips the full analysis capabilities of the GIS uh, that we can use to identify schematic elements for the purposes of synchronizing selection sets or for the purposes of defining the contents of the diagrams themselves. So I can use my utility network traces. I can use, of course, the select by location, select by um, attribute, and uh, any geoprocessing functions that I, perhaps I may have written to identify and select features. There's a number of advantages that the ArcGIS schematics extension offers over um, what we consider the more traditional applications or environments for maintaining schematic diagrams. Those traditional systems uh, could be anything from hand-drawn uh, drafted diagrams to uh, your CAD systems or perhaps Microsoft Visio or any number of other applications you might use to edit your schematics. ArcGIS schematics offers an advantage in that the geographic and schematic data are stored within the same relational database management system. And an extension of this advantage is that you can edit the data once within your geo database and um, schematics can, can automatically be updated to reflect that edit. So this cuts down on the opportunity for you to introduce other errors um, because you have to perform the edit again. It also can greatly reduce the backlog um, if you have schematic documents which are out of sync with your map or vice versa. Both systems really offer a full suite of layout refinement tools. We have what we call algorithms in ArcMap that automate a lot of the white space management and then of course there's also a suite of tools um, that you can use uh, to align features or to move individual features manually to place them in your schematic diagram. And once you've placed them, you can save the diagram and uh, you don't have to do it again. We also, as we showed in ArcMap, uh, have the, the spatial views and the schematic views integrated into one single application. So we can do things like identify um, and perform selection sets and push those selection sets between the two uh, views. And we also have the ability to simultaneously access multiple databases um, to define the contents of our schematic diagrams. So, of course, we can consume data from our GIS database, from the geo database, but we can also pull in data from third-party systems into one single schematic diagram to integrate them into a common view. So, schematics is really concerned with connectivity. It's, it's really about showing relationships and interdependencies among elements. And so we have a number of options uh, by which we can derive connectivity. Um, obviously, if you store your physical data inside a geodatabase and you've built a geometric network for that data, we can consume the topological coincidence um, of the logical tables behind the geometric network to derive connectivity for your schematic diagrams. We can also derive connectivity from to and from attributions in, in tabular data. And, uh, of course, if you have a third-party system, with perhaps its own API or um, a complex series of tables, we can write custom code to derive to from connectivity, um, which can then be consumed by ArcGIS schematics. And lastly, uh, at the next release of ArcGIS schematics, which is 9.2, we'll be able to consume network analyst route analysis layers. A little bit about uh, configuration of schematics. I've mentioned that um, you, know, you can configure your symbols, um, you also use uh, an application called ArcGIS Schematics Designer, which is a standalone application. Um, it's for use by administration level users. This isn't a typical end user application. Um, you use it kind of as a one-off uh, at the beginning of your schematics deployment, 
and you use it to define uh, the various diagram types that will be available to users in your organization. And you also use it to define the symbology of your elements, the labels of your elements, and the contents of the various diagrams. And that application is accessed by clicking on uh, the geodatabase and the schematic data set within the geodatabase from ARC Catalog. And Rick is going to show us a little bit of that in the next demo. So just to stress this and cover it in a slightly different manner, as I said and as we saw in that ARC Catalog graphic, we have our geodatabase. The schematic data set is stored within the geodatabase. And the schematic data set itself stores the configuration settings that we define with ArcGIS Schematics Designer. And it also stores the schematic diagrams themselves that we generate from within ArcMap. And of course, the ArcGIS Schematics extension and that functionality is embedded um, within the ArcMap application. And finally, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, I don't want you to lose sight of the fact that we have the ability to pull in data from other databases. So not only can we consume data from the geodatabase, but if you have uh, tabular data or aspatial data in other systems, we can also consume that data. So that wraps up this topic. I'm going to go ahead and turn this over to Rick for a software demonstration. Thanks, Will. Um, so during this part of the software demonstration, hopefully I'm going to touch upon all of the key points uh, that Will just talked about and showed you in the slide part of the presentation. I'm going to start off by uh, looking at ARC Catalog here. What we're going to do is go through the initial setup configuration um, of creating one of these schematic data sets, all the way down to using ArcMap to select some data and generate a schematic diagram. So I want to show you the whole process from start to finish. To start with, uh, when, you would, when you would be getting started the first time you install schematics on a machine, the first thing that you need to do in both ArcMap and in Arc Catalog is enable the extension. To do that, you go to the Tools menu, click the Extension uh, menu item. That brings up a dialog box showing you all of the installed extensions. So if you installed schematics, that shows up in the list. Simply check the box and click Close. What that does is it gathers a license for schematics and then enables the, the uh, various toolbars that you use to create your schematic diagrams and work with schematic data sets. So for this first demonstration, we're going to work with some data that is inside a geometric network. So if I open up my Minerville Electric uh, map document here, uh, the best thing to do if you're using a geometric network is to create a map document and use ArcMap to set up the symbology exactly the way you'd like to see this inside your schematic diagrams. Now note that that can be edited later on if you choose to have different symbology in the map than in your diagrams, but this just gives us a good starting point. So I have this map document, all my symbology is configured. Next thing I need to do is either create a, da a database or use an, use an existing database to store my new schematic data set. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and create a new personal geodatabase. As Will mentioned, uh, this could be a personal geodatabase, it could be an SDE database, or also at 9.2 we're introducing the new concept of a file geodatabase. Once you have your new database or an existing database, you right click and say new schematic data set. Once you have your new schematic data set, you right click and choose to edit the project. This opens up the schematic designer application. For those of you watching this splash screen here, you'll note that I am running version 9.2 of the software. Um, I will try and point out throughout this what the differences are in 9.1 and 9.2. Um, but for the most part, everything that you'll see today uh, during these demonstrations is available in either 9.1 or 9.2. So now I'm inside my schematic designer application. Uh, again, to, uh, to follow on with what Will mentioned, this is an admin type of tool. This is used one time to configure the schematic application, and then your end users would never be in here. They would use ArcMap. So you start off by creating a diagram type. Think of this as just a template for the type of diagrams you want to see inside your company. 
Uh, for example, in a utility type of company, maybe you have transmission diagrams, distribution diagrams, inside plant diagrams. Those are all specific types of diagrams. For now, I'm just going to call this one default and say OK. Um, the only thing you would really need to do with your diagram type is maybe modify the builder or parameters. The standard builder that you see over here in the schematic builder entry, that is used for geometric networks. If you open that up, you'll see custom query based builder. You would use this one if you're going to use tabular data that you're going to query directly. And then also at 9.2, we have added this network data set builder. Um, and we'll give you a demonstration of that one here in the next, uh, in the next round of demonstrations. Some of the parameters for the standard builder, you can optionally check the box to initialize link vertices. What that means is when a diagram is generated, the links on the diagram will look exactly like the features did inside of ArcMap. By default, we do not check that box, so the links are simplified as straight lines, basically as the crow flies between the next two nodes that they connect. We're going to leave that at it as is. Now you just need to tell the system what feature classes are going to be represented in the diagram type. Again, since we're using a geometric network, we have already configured a map document. So we're simply going to use the tool to point to that map document. The system now reads through the map document, tries to find the geometric network, automatically highlights and selects the different feature classes that are part of the geometric network. We just say OK, and then we hit the Save button. What we have done here is created an element type in this designer tree view to represent every one of the feature classes. We've pulled over the symbology automatically, and we could use this tool to configure labeling, modify symbology, etc. The save process is now taking all of this configuration information and storing it inside the schematic data set inside of our geodatabase. So we're done with our configuration part of the work. Now all we need to do is open up our map document, select some data, and generate a diagram. As Will pointed out, we can use all the power of ArcMap to do that selection. We could do a select by location, we could do a select by attributes, we could do a manual selection, or in the case of a geometric network, we could also decide to run a trace. For this demonstration, I'm just simply going to manually select some areas here uh, around this Greeley substation. You can see it selected a few features. Now I just click the Generate Schematic Diagram button. The user needs to point to a particular schematic data set. Remember, you could have more than one schematic data set per database, or, or you might have databases in different locations within your company. So the user just needs to know which one to point to. Here's the new personal geo database we created. Here's our new schematic data set. The user needs to pick a diagram type. Remember, you could have more than one diagram type to represent the different, uh, the different templates. Uh, in this case, we only configured one, so that's my only option. I give this diagram a name, and I say OK. Schematics now reads the selection and the connectivity from the geometric network and presents us with a new diagram in its own data frame. So if we zoom in here a little bit on this diagram and the center part of it, we can reduce some symbol sizes a little bit, make things more readable. At this point, uh, we could go ahead and take this schematic layer and drag it up and drop it right in with our geography data frame. So now you're seeing a schematic diagram directly on top of the geography. Here you can see what I was talking about with the uh, use link vertices. Notice that the schematic elements here are just straight lines in this representation between the next pieces of, uh, or the next features instead of the way they were digitized in the map. That's the default behavior and again is just that simple configuration checkbox. I'm going to go ahead and move this diagram back down into its own data frame and switch back to it. Once you have a schematic diagram, now you are in a free-form environment. You can move and manipulate all of the elements on the diagram, all that you would like, and there will, it will not impact the underlying feature data. So it really is a free-form environment for you to do some diagramming in. For example, um, I might decide to use the schematic network analyst toolbar Maybe I just want to simplify this diagram to make it more readable. 
I can select a node, tell schematics to find everything connected to it, and now I might use one of the many algorithms that are provided out of the box with schematics. For example, smart tree. All the algorithms have uh, properties pages. You can modify some of the some of the configuration that it will impact the out the output of the algorithm. So here I want to just leave it at default. I'm going to go from left to right on the screen. When I say OK, you can see a nice simplified representation there. I'm going to do this a couple more times just to simplify the diagram. This time I'm going to go top to bottom. And now I'm going to come over here and I'll do left to right twice. And uh, then that's about all we'll do, or we'll go right to left actually here. We'll do that two times. And now, if I zoom in here a little bit more, you see a much more simplified representation of that network. So maybe this makes it easier for us to understand what's going on. Again, I could go ahead and drag and drop this onto the geography and change over there. Doesn't make as much sense this time because I've completely modified the spatial relationships here. Uh, but just to show you that it is a layer in the map and you can place it on the base map at any point in time. So we'll move it back. Uh, some other things that you might want to do inside of or using the schematics extension, maybe you want to just uh, rotate part of a tree around. So, for example, I could select a node. I can select a link that locks the rest of the chain. And then from my editor menu, I've got lots of functions. Rotate tree being one of those. I'll click it twice. And now we've rotated that branch around 90 degrees. Um, I could just use this tool to manually move some nodes. So I grab things and just move them where I want them. Now you'll notice they're not nice and lined up. If I want to line things up, I can go ahead and select a couple of nodes, use our align horizontally function, select the next nodes, and align these vertically. And now we've got a nice clean looking diagram. However, now I've got a big gap between some of the, the elements that are showing on the diagram. Another algorithm that you might want to run is our linear dispatch algorithm. This algorithm just tries to analyze the link and automatically move the nodes so that there's equal spacing between the nodes. So when I run it, now you see the end result where we've, where we've moved the nodes to equally space things along that link. I could undo, go back to where it was, or redo and go back to the algorithm. Um, I can use the identify tool here in ArcMap directly on a schematic diagram. What I end up seeing at the top level is a little bit of information about the schematic element itself. And then if I go underneath it, now I'm actually looking at some of the information from the feature in that feature class. Other things you might find interesting here, uh, which Will talked about, is the ability to select some items in a schematic diagram and push those over to the map. So even though you've changed where things are located, you always can reference back to the real world features. So I click the propagate to map button, and then when I go back to my geographic data frame, you can now see the selection, the selected items that I just had in my schematic diagram. Optionally, I could go ahead and select some items over in the map and choose to push it the other direction. Now when I go back to my diagram, we've not only highlighted but also zoomed in to the location of those elements on my schematic diagram. So you always have that connectivity between things. Now I'll save that diagram and we'll go take a look back in uh, Arc Catalog. Now you'll notice that you see this new default diagram that we created showing up. I can actually select it and preview that diagram in Arc Catalog. This is also where I would delete a diagram if I wanted to delete it. Other things that a company might want to do here is optionally create schematic folders. Uh, again, it is optional. You can nest these as deep as you want. Just think about this like Windows Explorer. You want to just uh, modify the location of your files on your hard drive. That's basically what this is doing. So I can drag and drop my diagram into a different folder, and now I've changed the location of it inside of Arc Catalog. And with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Will. Thanks, Rick. So I just wanted to review the topics from that last subject. Um, we established a definition for schematics, basically drawings that uh, are stressing the connectivity and the relationship of elements, and uh, which are in a scale-free environment that isn't necessarily tied to the geographic features. 
We looked at some of the ways that schematics is integrated in ArcMap, and I think Rick's demos uh, was an effective presentation of that. And we discussed some of the advantages of ArcGIS schematics over uh, traditional CAD systems. We also looked at the various data source options available to us, geometric networks, uh, to from attribution or uh, custom code against a third party API to derive connectivity information. And we also looked at the schematic designer interface and uh, the architecture whereby you edit uh, your configuration of your schematic data set with designer and uh, it's available within the geo database and then consumed by the schematics extension from within ArcMap. So I'm going to go ahead and take some of your questions. Um, actually, this one might be a, a good one for Rick. I'll, I'll take a crack at it. But Mark in Toronto has asked, do you know of any issues related to creating a schematic from an ArcFM set of features? Um, ArcFM, uh, for those of you who don't know, is a product from Miner & Miner, one of our business partners uh, in the utility space. And they do use custom feature classes. Um, but uh, we have done quite a, num a bit of work with them. and. Uh, I'm not aware of any issues that we've encountered um, with using their features in creating schematics. Um, Rick, do you have anything to add to that? Mark, the only thing that I would add here um, is that oftentimes in uh, map documents that I've seen coming from minor and minor data, the same feature class is represented multiple times with definition queries on those different layers. Uh, schematics doesn't really like that when it's importing the symbology just that first time. Um, so when you're, when you're doing that initial configuration you saw me do, it's best to just have the layer represented one time, set the symbology, import it into schematics. Then after that, your user can have the layer multiple times with definition queries, etc., and generate diagrams and everything is fine. Okay, Blaine from Tempe, Arizona would like to know if a schematic data set can be exported as a shapefile. It can, and it can also be exported as a set of uh, feature classes in a geo database. Which leads me to a question from Rebecca in Charlottesville that says, uh, can schematic diagrams be exported to AutoCAD? The diagrams can be exported to a shapefile or feature class, and then you're welcome to use any of the tools in our toolbox or uh, perhaps the data interoperability extension to uh, export that to AutoCAD or CAD diagrams. Um, I think we're going to move on to the next topic in the interest of time, but we will come back uh, to question and answers at the end of uh, each topic, and I'll try and get to some more questions. So our second topic today is concerned with looking at some physical network applications of ArcGIS schematics. This schematics really has uh, utility networks in its, its genes. It was first uh, developed for uh, telco application. And uh, utility markets are very large users of schematic diagrams. They have a, a number of various diagram types um, that they use in their day-to-day -day activities. Um, and that really goes across the board from the energy space to telecommunications, oil and gas, and water supply and wastewater. Um, but basically the thing that these uh, elements all have in common, these industries all have in common, is that they're, they're dealing with um, the physical infrastructure elements that are out in the field that keep the lights on and uh, deliver the commodities uh, that we use in our day-to-day -day life um, and very concerned with physical connectivity of real-world features. Obviously the ability to generate network diagrams from schematics is uh, the most compelling reason to use schematics uh, for utility applications. Um, also, uh, if you do have the ArcFM Miner and Miner product um, or perhaps Telcordia's Network Engineer product, um, or any of our other business partners' products in the utility space, these applications have very customized and fit-for-purpose uh, trace routines um, for the various application spaces. And um, we can consume those trace results, so you can perform these very advanced uh, trace analyses to derive a selection set and then use schematics to uh, consume that selection set to create uh, schematic diagrams. Also, the ability, as Rick showed, to create and overlay geoschematic diagrams on top of our underlying base map features is very useful. And uh, something that Rick is going to show us in the next demo is the ability to trace and visualize inside plant features so I can step from my physical network connectivity as derived from my geometric network um, where the connectivity is based on topological coincidence and then step into uh, perhaps connectivity that's derived from to-from attribution and tables 
and then step back into my physical network. Also, the ability to integrate with SCADA systems um, is a compelling reason to use ArcGIS schematics. SCADA stands for Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition, for those of you who um, aren't in this market space. And it's basically um, systems that um, fry our alarms and monitor the health of network, the network and uh, various metrics on field equipment and allows for control, uh, remote control uh, from a command center. So perhaps in this diagram we can see that a switch position, um, the diagram has been re refreshed to uh, reflect pretty much in real time a change in the switch position from uh, open position to a closed position. And lastly, looking at um, cyber networks and how does physical networks and physical redundancy compare with the logical redundancy that may, we may have built into our communications networks. Schematics is also uh, very useful in the transportation markets, and transportation um, shares in common that physical built real world uh, structure and physical plant really um, that the utilities markets have. And the applications for schematics uh, branches across really any of the transportation domains that you might think of. Everything from logistics and shipping to commercial or municipal railways, um, private and public bus companies, turnpike authorities, and the airline industry. Some common applications for schematics in the transportation industry are to generate straight line diagrams or oftentimes five mile diagrams as a standard in the rail industry. Um, if you're familiar with the London tube map, for example, or a standard metro map, um, you can consume your physical plant assets, your physical network features, and create straight line diagrams from those features. You could also use it to update and create switching plans or generate rail yard diagrams. And as Rick is also going to show in the next demo, we can consume network data set analyses. So um, if you perform a multimodal trace perhaps with network analysts, um, we can take those data set features and create a schematic diagram. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Rick, and uh, he'll show us some of the topics that I just covered. Thanks, Will. Um, so at the beginning of this demonstration, we're going to take a look at a network data set. Uh, so the network data set we're looking at here comes to us from Paris. Uh, it shows their metro system as well as the streets inside of Paris. I'm going to be using the network analyst extension to solve a route. So you, you're able to place some points on the map and solve a route between those points. For those of you not familiar with the network analyst extension or that would like more information, uh, you can go to this training website where you went today to view this one. Uh, go to the archives and you will be able to find a, a uh, recorded training session from the network analyst extension team. What I need to do here is go to the Network Analyst Toolbar, create a new route. Then you can go to that specific route and modify symbology or a few other things. The only thing I'm going to do on the route is go into the properties and turn on the start time uh, attribute. I'm going to be using this as a label for my schematic diagrams. Now I use the tools to go ahead and plot out some sort of a route through this network. Uh, let's just add three items here. Then we tell the system to solve that route. Network analyst does its thing to uh, go ahead and find the, the path between all of the points I added. At that point, it's similar to what you saw me do in the last demonstration. I click generate schematic diagram. I need to point to the uh, schematic data set that was set up for the network analyst builder. So here you can see I'm pointing to a network analyst analysis MDB file. Again, optionally pick a diagram type. It's a little different than the form you saw the last time. If I had more than one route or more than one type of analysis from the network analyst extension, I would be able to pick, pick that particular layer in this dropdown. Then I simply give it a name just like I did before and generate the diagram. The only thing that we've uh, modified here is we've used rules inside of uh, the schematics designer application to simplify uh, the network a little bit. We've modified what we call net junctions along this route. So now I've got a nice simple little diagram. Um, I could drag this and lay it on top of the base map. It looks exactly like the route that was generated uh, by the result set from network analyst. 
I might now choose to do something like maybe reduce the vertices. That straightens the line between these nodes. Um, I could undo that if I want to keep it exactly the way it looked from, from the route itself. Uh, next thing I'll do is generate a diagram from that same route, except this time I'm going to use another diagram type that I have configured here. The only difference with this diagram type is that I have automatically applied the hierarchical smart tree algorithm that we used in the last demonstration, and it's set to go from top to bottom. So when I create this diagram, we end up with a nice little top-down diagram. If I increase my label size here a little bit, you can see a, quite a bit of a difference here. Um, so here at this point, maybe we want to jump over to the layout view inside of ArcMap and move a few things around here so that we can take a look at all three representations at the same time. So that's a pretty powerful feature with ArcMap and with, with uh, the use of ArcGIS schematics. So in this particular case, we have the physical geography and the route. We have a schematic representation of that exact route. And then we have a pure schematic representation um, with a straight line diagram here. All right, now we're going to go back over to our Brazil uh, sample. And we're going to look at the concept of inside plant diagrams. So to start with, I'm going to open up this, this Minerville database and talk a little bit about these tables you see with a prefix of ISP. This stands for inside plant. Um, but before I dig into that, I do want to point out that this particular piece of this uh, demonstration is using a utility type of example. But this, uh, this example could be anything, right? If you have tabular data and can tell schematics how to connect from one thing to another thing, you can generate diagrams from it. So, for example, it could be simply the org chart for your company. If you can show me data that, that tells me that the president is connected to the vice president, vice president to upper management, all the way on down, uh, we can generate a diagram for that. Maybe it's tracking records for animal movements uh, between ranches or tree trimming applications, so on and so forth. Any type of tabular data can be used. So real quick here, we've got some nodes and we've got some link tables. Uh, with the node tables, nothing really exciting here except for the facility ID. You have to have a unique identifier for the node. And in this case, we need to know which uh, substation that node belongs inside. The, the uh, main part of the application when you're doing these custom query is the connectivity. So in this example, I'm using the bus bar link table. And we have two specific attributes configured in this example. And that is my from equipment facility ID and my to equipment facility ID. So for this first record, for example, I can see that this link connects from junction 0001 over to dynamic protective device number 5. We also, in this table, know that it belongs inside the Greeley substation. So from this type of tabular data with explicit attributes for connectivity, I can generate a diagram. So if we flip over to the Minerville map document, We'll get rid of the last diagram that we created, and I'm going to open an existing diagram from the data we were just looking at. It's my internal diagram for Greeley. So what the system does here is read, those, read the connectivity from those tables and represent it. Now, I've already used the schematic tools and modified this, moved things where I wanted it. That, those tables, if you noticed, did not have a shape field in them. They're non, it's non-spatial data. So when I originally create this diagram, the nodes are sort of randomly placed. I use the tools to move them where I want to. At that point, I could go ahead and lay this on top of my geographic data frame. And now I can actually see my schematic diagram directly on top of the base map. The reason I can do that is I use the schematic tools to move all of the nodes from this diagram from the non-spatial data and place them while I was on top of this base map. So it really makes it look like the non-spatial and the spatial data are all connected together. I'm going to open up one more diagram from the geometric network here. And this one is a switching diagram for all of the feeders that come out of the Greeley substation. 
This particular diagram has a bunch of node reductions done to it, so we greatly simplified this, and then we applied those smart tree algorithms. These links might have uh, hundreds of features in real life, but we've simplified it down to just let you see the switches and the dynamic protective devices. I'm going to go ahead and take my Greeley drawing that we just looked at and add it to the same data frame. So now we're looking at an example of non-spatial and spatial data together at the same time. Up until now, we've looked at all configuration. Uh, quickly, I'll show you some customization. Something you might want to do is set up some tracing that allows you to go between the physical geography and this non-spatial tabular data. So for example, I can tell the system to run a trace. You can see it went from the outside into the inside. It did stop, however. If we jump in and take a look at the reason for that, you'll notice that it hit a switch that was, that was set into a position that, that electricity could not continue through it. So another piece of customization that I've added here is to allow the user to actually modify the position of one of those switches, updates the record in the database. So now if we step back and run that trace one more time from the same location, we should see a much different result. So here you can see it made it through the internal non-spatial data and then back out into the spatial data. Um, and with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it back over to Will. Okay, thanks Rick. So I hope Rick's demos and, uh, and the material from the previous se section uh, gave you a good overview of utility applications and transportation applications of the schematics product. Um, this is kind of really, as I said, what it was built for in the first place. In the next topic, we'll uh, explore some uh, novel applications of the product. But I want to take a couple of your questions first. Um, Allison from Tacoma would like to know if table relationships can be used with schematics. Um, yes, they can actually. We can consume relationship classes with custom rules in schematics to uh, pull in features um, that are related to, say, our geometric network features or to uh, elements which we already have in our schematic diagram and uh, actually create a visual representation of that relationship with a link. Uh, Bill from San Francisco has also asked what license level is needed for ArcGIS schematics. ArcGIS schematics is licensed as an extension. Um, its pricing is consistent with the other extensions. Um, However, any user that has the extension installed um, has the ability to view diagrams without actually um, um, having a license of the product. So in this scenario, you might want to buy um, a limited set of licenses for um, uh, some people in your organization who will be responsible for creating and updating and saving the diagrams, um, but then you might make those diagrams available to a much wider audience of uh, standard ArcGIS users. And the schematics functionali functionality is also available at um, the ArcView, Arc Editor, and um, Arc Info licensing levels. But of course, you're subject to some of the other restrictions about geometric networks and things like that that you can do um, at those licensing levels. So I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next topic in the interest of time. And uh, we'll take some more questions at the end. All right, so after we've looked at those physical plant uh, and physical network applications, I want to look at some other applications for the product. There's a number of them beyond the utilities and transportation space, and I kind of think of these as the non-traditional applications, um, although they're becoming more and more um, mainstream and you're seeing more and more of them all the time. Um, schematics really, at its heart, offers us the ability to represent elements and how they're related. Um, and those elements can be spatial, as we've seen, or they can be aspatial objects. This really extends the power of ArcGIS, which um, kind of heretofore has been um, very concerned with physical assets and uh, the location of elements in the real world and real world features. Um, we can use schematics to depict flow also through non-physical networks. By a non-physical network, I mean um, not a pipe that you can reach out and touch or a wire that you can reach out and touch. Um, but a social network perhaps, or um, a financial transaction, um, a much more abstract network. Um, we can look at abstract and indirect relationships between elements. Oftentimes this information is buried within a database and it's not obvious just by looking at tables. 
but by um, configuring schematics to create a visual representation of that, it makes the data much more uh, palatable and uh, we have uh, much more, much greater ability to understand the data. We can also look at interdependencies among elements. And by looking at the interdependencies, we can also identify hubs and points of weakness in our network where we might need to strengthen the network. Some of these aspatial things, just to uh, put it in perspective and give you a better understanding of that, um, might be, for example, a plot or uh, an ideology. That's not a physical thing that you would ever put on a map, but it might be useful to have a visual representation of that and tie it to other aspatial features or to your physical plant or physical features. Um, there's a lot of applications for schematics in the health and agricultural fields, and that includes uh, really any of the markets, farming, ranching, epidemiology, down to food packing and distribution. Um, this particular application shows animals traveling um, between uh, ranches to um, distribution plants, and you could use this kind of an application uh, to track diseases or to track the animals themselves. If you had an outbreak of a particular disease and needed to do a product recall or track animals that have potentially been affected, you could use schematics to help you in that analysis. Um, here I'm talking about food supply chains, but um, it doesn't take much leap of an ima the imagination to see how this could just be widget X and widget B and um, where are my suppliers for those elements and perhaps my supply chain is disrupted, where are my other suppliers, how can I um, get widget X quicker so that I can continue on with my manufacturing perhaps. The intelligence and criminology markets are also big consumers of um, schematic products and schematic visualization capabilities. Um, and that really crosses over from defense to homeland security and uh, also to law enforcement. And Rick's going to give us a demo of this, but there's a number of applications. Um, the ability to visualize social networks, as I, as I mentioned, be they physical um, terrorist or criminal, criminal networks. The ability to track financial transactions and how money moves across borders, um, perhaps looking at uh, money laundering schemes and trying to um, figure out how money is being laundered. Also looking at the flow of communication and information or ideas among groups and among individuals. And in a Homeland Security application, following um, how critical infrastructure can be protected. So we had a simplified presentation of that earlier, but um, really we're looking at this is an electrical feature and these are water features. We're looking at an outage in my electrical network uh, affecting the delivery of power to water features, uh, which then affects uh, whether or not water is delivered to critical assets and critical infrastructure like my hospitals, for example. And we're simplifying this um, quite extensively through custom configuration of the schematics product to remove the clutter really and get to the heart of the matter. And we can also use schematics to manage the event response. So what are the capabilities that I need to respond to an event, to a homeland security threat? Um, where are the assets that I need to respond to the, ev the event? And how do I deploy them? And what's the command and control structure for uh, deploying those assets out into the field to respond to the event? So I'm going to go ahead and turn this over to Rick for our last demonstration of the day. And then we'll come up uh, with some questions for you. All right, so for our last uh, demonstration here, it's going to be a little bit different than the other demonstrations that we've been looking at up to this point. Uh, up to this point, we have been looking at uh, physical networks. We looked at the standard builder diagrams. We looked at custom query types of diagrams. Um, in this particular example, we are going to take a look at something that we're prototyping here on the 9.2 version called the social network analyst. In this particular uh, prototype, what we wanted to do was sort of simulate an environment like you would see uh, for those of you in the US on a TV show like Crime Scene Investigators, where you see them use a whiteboard, they put a bunch of pictures up, they draw lines with chalk between things, trying to create relationships to solve a problem. Up until this point, all the demonstrations that I've shown you uh, schematics was truly just a consumer of data that already existed. In this particular example, we're going to use schematics to generate new data that we're going to visualize. So here I've got this new little social network analyst toolbar. The user can bring up the social network, uh, social network symbols. Here they can pick between nodes and links. 
Uh, we've set up for this example, we've got a couple of different types of links, people, organizations, events, material, um, and it just filters the types of symbols. And then the same thing down on the links. So really all the user needs to do here is select a particular node and click on the map to draw it. So we already have a little bit of a scenario going here. Let me turn on some labels. And you'll see that we have Mr. Jones, he was robbed. This triangle is our robbery event. Um, and we also can see here that we found a gun at that particular robbery. So I'm going to expand on this just a little bit. I'm going to add a new suspect. So I click the suspect node and then I simply click on the map. I'm presented with an object editor. Um, and with this object editor, I can add as much or as little information as I want. We could reverse geocode. If you're using this diagram on top of a base map, you could reverse geocode the location the user clicked on. Or as the user starts typing in enough information, if the system feels that it can reverse geocode, you can go ahead and reverse geocode. Uh, the main thing that you would want to do for this prototype is at least put in some sort of a name, and this is used for that label. So I'm going to put in criminal and say accept, and now we see this new node. Um, one thing to note, any of the elements you see on here with a red outline around them just means that they were not geocoded. If there's no red outline, means that it was geocoded. For the links, and I'll show you uh, the difference in a minute, if it's a solid link, means that this is a confirmed linkage. If it's a dashed link, means that it is not confirmed. So now I'm going to go ahead and just use the Create Link tool. I select a particular node, and then I start to drag and just try to connect whatever I need to. So here, we'll go ahead and connect this criminal to the gun. We get another little editor. You notice when I pick criminal to weapon, I get two options for the type of link. This criminal either owns or uses that weapon. Here I can check the confirmed uh, confirm link. If I don't confirm it, it's dashed. I can change the date and I can put uh, some sort of a description that will be used for the label. So when I say OK here, now we get the dashed link and we have a little label there that says user. Now I can use all the tools you've seen to this point to go ahead and manually move things around. If I chose to geocode these elements, I can optionally select one of these things and tell the system to put it at its initial position. That's another one of these algorithms that's here in my layout task drop down. If I did that to a node, it would go, if I geocoded it, it would move that node to its XY position from where the geocoding happened. So you can see this is just a quick prototype that allows you to simply digitize things and then use the power of schematics to lay it out into a nice storyboard to try and solve a particular problem. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it back over to Will. Thanks, Rick. So we're going to go ahead and wrap up. Um, I hope that uh, Rick's demos really uh, drove some of the novel applications of schematics home to you. Um, what I really want to get across is um, to try and just you know start you guys thinking about um, potential applications for the product um, beyond the physical plant. Um, there's obviously a lot of them, and um, you know schematics is really extending the functionalities of ArcGIS. Um, ArcGIS, for all of the great things it does, um, really has, until now, just been uh, concerned with physical assets and the placement of place things in the real world. And schematics really takes it to the next level and that it allows us to look at these abstract things or aspatial elements and tie them back to the geography to um, perform novel analysis in ways that we really couldn't before. Um, so I hope it's really kind of whetted your appetite and given you some food for thought. I'll go ahead and take a few questions that we've gotten. One question comes from Eldon in Provo, Utah. He's wondering if schematics can be served out of ArcGIS server. Um, we Technically, the answer is yes. Um, if you have a server and you have uh, schematics installed on the machine, you can uh, publish the diagram. Um, it's not actually licensed for this, and you're very limited in how you can interact with the diagram. There's no web controls, for example, for interacting with the schematic diagram. Um, at 9.2, you will be able to use ArcGIS schematics um, in ArcGIS engine applications, so the schematics components will be available there. Um, Charles in Springfield is asked if the diagrams can be published through ArcIMS. 
Um, they can be published through ARC IMS. Um, again, uh, if you use ARC map server and you have schematics installed on the machine, uh, if you publish a map document containing schematics, the diagram will be there. You are kind of limited, again, in your interaction capabilities. You also always have the ability to uh, output the schematic layout. We saw Rick interacting with the schematics in the layout view. So um, it's just a layer in ArcMap, and we can export that as a PDF file or any number of uh, raster or image formats um, that you can then serve out through your web application. And uh, also, as I mentioned before, you can also export elements to shapefiles, and then, of course, you could serve them uh, through Arc IMS or to feature class. Tanner from Albany has asked if there are rules that can be applied to control the way objects connect to or relate to one another. Um, yes, there actually are. There's a, a number of rules uh, in the current product, and uh, these are being extended, and um, new ones are being added for 9.2. Um, we have the ability to... Um, reduce elements, um, as we kind of saw with some of the super span, we call it a super span where um, we remove intervening elements so that we can really focus on um, just the elements that we're interested in, although the connectivity of those elements is of course based on the very low level um, basic geometric network connectivity. So we can remove elements um, based on their attribute values, based on the degree to which they connect. By degree, I mean the number of elements to which they connect. So um, features that only connect to one element can be removed, for example. Um, and then I also obviously spoke about the relationship class rules that we can use. And let's see, I think we might have time for one more question. Uh, Mike from Nashville says, can I assume you can create a schematic map and publish it in Arc Reader for others to view? Um, the answer to that question is yes, you uh, can use uh, ArcGIS uh, Publisher uh, to create and uh, publish a map document, a PMF file containing uh, a schematic diagram, and then it will be available to users uh, that have Arc Reader. All right, so I think it looks like we're out of time. I hope you enjoyed today's seminar. I want to refer you to some other sources of information. Um, there is a professional services training class that I offer um, called Working with ArcGIS Schematics. You can click on the instructor-led icon there or visit the URL indicated on this page. There's also product tutorials that are installed with the product um, at the PATH uh, C ArcGIS ArcTutor tutorial docs as shown here. And lastly, of course, there's always the product pages and the support pages. Um, the product page for schematics has a number of excellent uh, videos and uh, further demos to give you some more ideas, or um, which may be a little more tailored for your particular application space. And you can visit those pages by clicking on the ArcGIS icon there as well. So again, I hope you enjoyed today's seminar. And on behalf of ESRI, I'd like to thank you all for attending.